Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. It is early June 2023, and I've missed something very important in the core game of DCS that happened about a month ago. I've been busy with my own projects and with baby and stuff, and I've missed it. It's with the AH-64 Apache. We now have the ability to give it more gun ammo or extra fuel, and most importantly, we now have radar-guided Hellfire missiles. So first, regards ammo... We start off a standard with 25% here, 300 rounds. As long as this station is blank, IAFS, then we can actually increase that now to 100%. That's 1,200 rounds, which is pretty cool. Or, instead of that extra ammo, we can have a 100-gallon combo fuel tank. More fuel, but it takes us back down to 25% ammo. And very excitingly, we also now have the active radar homing variant of the Hellfire, the L version. We've always had the K, which is the laser-guided variant. We now have the radar-guided variant. We can carry them on the same stations as the K, and we can carry up to 16. Each of these missiles has its own air-to-ground radar and can be used for fire and forget firing, which we couldn't do with the K version. The Hellfires can be fired from either the rear or the front seat, and we will show both. Quickly, a reminder of our controls. If we are the pilot and we want to command George AI in the front seat to fire, we'll need hide to show and remove the AI menu, left short to cycle through weapons, up short to command George to slave the sensors to my reticle position, up long to change rules of engagement, whether he fires the missile or whether I actually fire the missile. If we are presented with a list of targets, then we will cycle up and down them with up short and down short and select the target with right short. If we're in the front seat, then we will need RHG sight select switch TADS to choose TADS, LHG weapons action WAS switch M to select the missile, our four field of view switches to help find a target, RHG manual tracker down, up, left and right to slew the sensor, RHG laser range finder trigger second detent to laser range, and LHG weapons trigger switch second detent push and hold to fire the weapon. Let's start as the rear seat. So, I'm going to force our master arm on. I'm going to show our George AI helper menu at the bottom right of the screen. I'm going to George left short twice to select the missile. I'm going to George up long to give him control to fire the missile. That is the Hellfire selected and he has control to fire the missile. We can have the two types of Hellfire on one aircraft and we can cycle between the two if needed. Let's get in a position in front of this obstacle are a bunch of bad guys that we can fire at. Of course the beauty of a fire and forget weapon is we can Go above an obstacle, fire, and then go back down before the missile has actually hit the target. So, super simple. I want to find a target with my reticle, put the crosshair on it, my head tracker, George up short to command George to slave the sensor to that target. A list at the bottom left of the screen has come up of the different possible targets. They just happen to be the same type. I want to make sure he's chosen the right target. So, video tads. I'm going to choose the one at the top of the list on the bottom left with George right short. He will turn the laser on temporarily to laser range, turn it off and then he'll fire the missile. Double check we've got the target there and the missile is in transit. Now the missile, like I said, has its own radar on board. So it will attempt to find and track the target that we pointed it at but there are implications of this if for instance we have several targets very close to each other there is always the chance it may find its own target and that target is the wrong target that we selected now that won't be a problem here because the targets have several hundred feet between each other so there's going to be no problems with target deconfliction in this case but it's something to bear in mind if you're attacking a very tight convoy there's a good chance the missile could go for the wrong target and look how it bends around to attack the target matrix, which you want to have a pop at trying to explain how this radar actually works in this missile. It has an active radar seeker, but it's quite small. So the radar seeker on its own in the conventional sense would be 
it would have difficulty picking out a target, discriminating a target. So what it does, it flies off axis initially, and it uses a technique called Doppler beam sharpening to increase the discrimination of the radar, essentially by lengthening or increasing the size of the radar aerial as it flies along. And the software processing process of the radar returns to increase the discrimination so it can pick out much smaller targets. Next, let's show the fact that we can ripple multiple missiles off before the first missile has actually hit its target. You could not do this with the K variant, which you had to wait until the first had struck before you fired a second. So, super simple. Find a target. I'm going to George up short. George right short. Wait until the missile fires. George up short. George right short. Wait for the missile to fire. George up short. George right short. That's fired three in the time that it's taken one missile to hit. Which is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, next I'm going to show from the front seat that we can do all this as well. In fact, just to reset everything, why don't I go and get a new aircraft. Right, master arm, hover, pause just to expedite video, press 2 to get through to the front seat. We're going to select TANS. We're going to remove the IP symbology with I on the keyboard. We're going to WAS our missile. We are going to play around with our field of view until we find a good sensible field of view. That looks good. About there. Slew our sensor onto the target. We're going to push and hold Laser Ranger second detent until the target data question mark disappears off the bottom left. Done. And we're going to push and hold the weapon fire button that we saw. Oof! Missile away. In fact, now's a good chance to show that if we got back into the rear cockpit, regain control, we could now move and hide behind this obstacle before the missile hits and the missile should still track. B. Okay, we are now hidden. Pause and the missile. Ta da! We'll track and blow the guy up, hopefully, before I crash. Uh, that is showing off firing the Lima missile from front and rear cockpit. I hope that was useful and see you later.